Hey guys, it's Miss Simpson and it is time for reading today. We are going to review some figurative language. So something that I've noticed in one of our characters in our story, How to Steal a Dog, um, Mucky, he uses a lot of figurative language. So he uses figurative language and a lot of you are having trouble understanding what in the world is this guy talking about by the way that he talks. So today we're going to talk about literal versus figurative language language. So literal language is exactly what it says. So if I said, I'm going to the store. Well, I mean, I'm going to the store. I'm not trying to tell you something different. I'm literally just going to the store. But figurative language means something other than its literal meaning. So for a simile, there, um, this one says the girls were like two peas in a pod. The literal, if I look at that, I would think literally those girls are two peas in a pot, a literal two peas in a pot. But what that simile is comparing those girls to two peas in a pod. So what it is really meaning is those girls are inseparable. They're best friends. They don't go anywhere without each other. They love each other. That's what that means. So similes obviously are comparing two things using like or as, but figurative language doesn't mean exactly what it says. So Mookie in our chapter, maybe a couple chapters ago, he said, I'm digging myself a hole or you're digging yourself a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. Or maybe Georgina said that. She wasn't literally getting a shovel out and digging her hole, was she? No, she kept opening her mouth and saying things, and she got in more and more and more and more and more trouble. Bad news for her, but she didn't literally mean she was getting a shovel out and digging herself a hole, right? No. So figurative language is telling you something other than its literal meaning. So let's talk about metaphors. Metaphors are when you compare two things by saying something is something else. So you compare two things not using like or as. So you've got to remember a simile uses like or as. A metaphor does not. A metaphor compares two things by saying something, something else. So the sun is a golden ball. It is not saying the sun is an actual golden ball in the sky, is it? No. It is saying that the sun is super yellow today and round. It's a super yellow, it's super round, super big in the sky. It's comparing it, trying to give you a mental picture of what the sun looks like. Because if I said the sun looks like a basketball, you would picture something orange. You wouldn't picture a golden ball. A hyperbole is an exaggerated statement obviously exaggerated and you fourth graders love using hyperboles all the time like i'm starving to death no you're not starving to death you're exaggerating so just like this one i use this example all the time i've told you to clean your room a million times no your mom didn't actually tell you a million times she's just saying i have told you to do this so many times would you please just get it done there's also personification. Personification is giving non-human objects human qualities. So the leaves danced in the wind. Did the leaves actually like get up and <clears throat> do a jig? No, the leaves didn't do that. The leaves were just flowing all around, all over the place. It looks like they were dancing. Again, figurative language is just giving you something to picture in your brain. It is not, um, figurative language is not literal. It's not exactly what it's saying. Then we have alliterations. That is repeating the same beginning sound. So bake a big cake with butter and bring it to the birthday bash. That would be alliteration. Um, so like Sally sold seashells by the seashore. That is a s -s 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 sound. A lot of the times authors use alliteration to show and importance to get you to notice something. And onomatopoeia, again, for importance to show you something, to give some effect on it. Uh, onomatopoeia is a sound word. It's a sound effect. It's like boom, bang, crash. But mainly when we're talking about similes and metaphors, hyperbole personification, it's not, it doesn't literally mean to do what it says. It is just giving you an example, trying to compare things or, um, bring some drama to the reading passage or the story. So in our book, Mookie does that all the time. He's constantly using figurative language in his um, speech. That's just kind of the character that Mookie is. He is very Southern. He, We have decided that he is homeless. 
He is missing a couple of fingers. He has a gold front tooth. He's a very funny character. So it only is fitting that he talks a little funny, right? He talks a little funny. So he uses all this figurative language. So um, we are going to read chapter 16. As I'm reading, follow along because I have picked out some figurative language in here. And I want to talk about its literal meaning versus its figurative meaning, like what it act what it's saying. And then I do have an assignment for you that has to do with our book I think you're going to like. So sit back, relax, put your headphones on, maybe eat you a snack, and let's read our book. As soon as I got to the house, I knew Mookie was back. First, I saw his bicycle propped against the bushes on the side. Then I caught a whiff of something cooking. He looked up when I came around the corner. Hey there, he said. Hey, I went straight over on over to Willie and gave him the bacon I'd brought. I'm glad you brought that, Mookie said, because he's been eyeing my Hoover gravy like he was going to eat it all. And then me too. I squinted into the pan Mookie held over a small fire in a ring of rocks. A pale gray liquid bubbled and smoked in the pan. What is that? I said. Hoover gravy, Mookie said. Want some? No, thanks. I watched him dip a slice of bread into the watery liquid and eat it. Yuck. Where's Toby? Mookie said. Doing his homework with my mom. Ain't you got some homework? I ain't. I sat on the steps and pulled Willie into my lap. Eh, a little. I picked some burrs out of Willie's fur, but I don't like... I don't need help like Toby. He's not very smart. Mookie sopped another piece of bread in the watery gravy. Smart ain't got a thing to do with school, he said. I never went past sixth grade myself. He ate the soggy bread and then added, and I'm pretty smart. He licked his fingers. Besides, if you ask me, school's about as useful as a trap door out on a canoe. Okay, let's pause. So, this right here, as useful as a trap door on a canoe, that is a simile. Why do you think he says that? Why does he say as useful as a trap door on a canoe? Well, he's trying to get you to picture it in your brain and to see how he's feeling. So, what does it mean as useful as a trap door on a canoe? So, think about a canoe. If it's like a boat, a kayak-ish sort of boat. If you have a trap door at the bottom of your canoe, is that going to help you in the water? No. A trap door on a canoe would be completely useless. It would flood your boat. You would be like in big trouble because you'd have nowhere to go and your boat really wouldn't float in the water, right? So, how do you, why do you think Mookie uses this in this context? What is he trying to tell Georgina? He's trying to tell her school isn't useful. In, my, in his opinion, school is not useful because he's got plenty of street smarts, right? So, he uses that simile. What does that tell us about Mookie as a character? That's a hard one. Just think about it. What does it tell us about Mookie as a character? It tells me that Mookie likes to use comparisons a lot and sayings a lot. Maybe he grew up talking like this. Maybe he grew up in the South because a lot of times in the South, we use funny little sayings like this um, all of the time, like digging yourself a hole or um, when we talk about spilling the beans, like when we say a secret. We use that all of the time. So it makes me think that he might be a little Southern. It tells me a lot about who he is as a character, that he likes to compare things. And so one thing he's saying is school isn't all that useful. So it shows me that, yeah, he, he doesn't, he probably didn't go to school. And maybe um, that is why he might be struggling a little bit. Okay, so let's keep reading. You can't get a job if you go, don't go to school, I said. Says who? says everybody. I work every day of my life, he said. Where? Everywhere. Like where, I said. Everywhere, he repeated. I frowned down at Willie and I ran my finger over the velvety fur on his nose. Mookie was crazy. Why was I even talking to him? Then how come you live like a bum, I said. I felt my face burn. I shouldn't have said that. Remember, we talked about bum in a few of our um, small groups, a lot of you thought that that meant your bottom and that does not mean your bottom. It means a somebody who is homeless. That is what they're referring to here. But Mookie just laughed. I said I worked. I didn't say I got paid. You work for free? 
Sometimes he took the pan off the fire and scooped dirt over the flames. How come? I said. He tied the end of the bread bag in a knot and then leaned back against his rolled up sleeping bag. Why not? He said. What kind of work do you do? Whatever I come across that needs to be done, he said. Might be fixing a roof, might be painting, might be digging ditches. He wiggled his three-fingered hand at me. Might even be fixing tractor engines. He added, for free? Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. He took a toothpick out of his shirt pocket and stuck it in the corner of his mouth. But why would you do that stuff for free? Because sometimes people need stuff done more than I need money, he said. That sounded crazy, but I didn't say so. It looked to me like he could use some money. Mookie took his baseball hat off and scratched his fuzzy gray hair. Besides, he said, I got a model. You want to hear it? I shrugged. Sometimes the trail you leave behind you is more important than the path ahead of you. He put his head back on. hat back on. You got a motto, he said. I shook my head. Nope. Let's pause. Mookie again says something that is not literal. Sometimes the trail you leave behind you is more important than the path ahead of you. What does that mean? What is he trying to say here? Is he literally talking about a trail and a path? No. Sometimes he's saying the thing, the path ahead of you, sometimes it's better to help those people and leave a mark on those people and an impression on those people rather than worrying about what's going on in the future. So again, another example of how Mookie uses figurative language. Let's keep reading. I shook my head. Nope. He stuck his finger in the gravy. Okay, little fella, he said to Willie. It's cool enough for you now. He slid the pan toward the steps, and Willie ran down and lapped up the gravy. Clumps of gooey flour stuck to the bottom of the pan, and he licked them, too. Then Mookie took me by surprise when he said, Ain't your mama found you a new place to live yet? Not yet, I said, but she's working on it. You know, I saw the strangest little thing today, Mookie said. I saw a little old sign with a dog look just like yours. Whoop, let's pause. Oh, no, guys. If you remember before spring break, they put up signs on every square inch of the town. Every square inch has a sign. And we thought our prediction was that Mookie was going to see those signs. And he was going to know what was going on. Was our prediction correct? He saw the signs. Let's see what he thinks about the signs. I swear when he said that, my heart sank right straight down to my feet. Like, Willie? Mookie nodded. Yep. I couldn't even look at Mookie. And you know, it was even stranger, he said. I hollowed, I swallowed hard and made myself say, what? That dog's name was Willie too. Mookie grinned at me, flashing that gold tooth of his. Ain't that something? I looked down at Willie, still licking the pan. Yes, sir, I said, surprised at how my voice came out so low and shaky. Mookie switched the toothpick over to the other side of his mouth and chewed on it. I looked down at the ground and traced circles in the dirt with the toe of my shoe. I never thought I'd say it, but I wished I was back in our old ratty car, snuggled up in the back seat, hugging my pillow. Uh, I better go, I said, giving Willie a quick pat on the head. Bye now. I felt Mookie's eyes on me as I walked toward the side of the house. Just as I was about to round the corner, he called out, Hey, Georgina. I stopped. I got another motto, he said. You want to hear it? He didn't even wait for me to answer. Sometimes, he said, the more you stir it, the worse it stinks. I turned and I hurried up the path to the road. Okay, let's stop. Mookie says another thing, again, a figurative language. Sometimes the more you stir it, the worse it stinks. Is he actually talking about stirring something? No, he's not talking about stirring something here. What does he mean by this? The more you stir it, the worse it stinks. If I had to guess, I think that Mookie is saying the more she lies and the more that she is not telling the truth, she's getting it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So the longer that she continues to lie and the longer that she holds this out, the worse it's going to be for her. So the more you stir it, the more problems that you're causing, the worse it's going to turn out for you in the end. Let's keep reading. When I got back to the car, I took out my purple notebook. I slouched down and I propped my feet up on the dashboard. I opened How to Steal a Dog. April 25th, I wrote 
Step seven, I stared out the window, tapping the pencil against my teeth. I looked down at the paper and wrote, remember. I looked out the window again and then back at the paper. I drew a box under the word remember. Inside the box, I wrote, sometimes the more you stir it, the worse it stinks. And then I closed the notebook, climbed into the back seat, hugged my pillow, and waited for Mama and Toby. All right, that was the end of chapter 16. Tomorrow we will read chapter 17, but I want to tell you what your assignment is. So today for your assignment, what you're going to do is I want you to think about Georgina as a character. Who is she? What does she do? What does she look like? And I want you to write one page explaining to me how you think Willie views Georgina. So think about everything Willie's gone through. He was taken, he was um, put into this house, he's with Mookie. I kind of want you to write one page from Willie's perspective. So we've only seen the story and what's going on in the story from Georgina. I want you to flip it around and think about Willie. What does it look like, sound like? You can write about the time, that one specific time he got stolen and he was so excited to go with these new people. They smelled good, they were kids, it seemed fun. You could write about him right now, how he feels being alone at that house, maybe how he feels about Georgina, how he feels about Mookie, what he's seen. But I just want you to write something from Willie's perspective. This is going to kick off our week of characters. So we're going to do characters Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I want you to really think about how Willie sees Georgina and write me a page. Don't say Willie sees Georgina as. No, I want you to write it as if you were Willie. All right. And I need one full page on that. All right, guys, I love y'all so much. Have fun writing your page about um, pretending that you're Willie in this story. Have a good day.